Hello everyone and welcome back to the 2024 Whoop UCI Mountain Bike World Series. It still feels good to see it to say that. Maripura round one. Some schedule changes in the world of cross country racing lead us to the under 23 men's cross country Olympic race this evening. And the first look at a really, really fast, fast track here in Brazil. What a venue as well. You can see baked in the sun all day today. Temperatures up around 28, 29 degrees, around about 80% humidity. The sun, I was just about to say it's dropped behind some cloud, but it is starting to beat down yet again on the IMTB bike park. 29 degrees Celsius there as the under 23 riders take to the grid. Big roar for Alex Malacarney. The man riding with the weight of a nation on his shoulders. You, you think you've seen, uh, you think you've seen passion for cycling, and you come to Brazil. The whole team here in Mayapura putting on an incredible, incredible event. Sasha Hudima takes to the line. Followed by Matthias Gay. Sorry, my apologies. Finn Trudler. It's the heat. I promise you it's the heat. I am not built for this. Here's Luca Martin for Orbea factory team. Who can forget what happened to him Val the Soli Trentino last season? Double puncture in the last lap. Bjorn Riley, track future racing. So, so impressive in the mud and the rain of Mont Saint Anne last time out. Sondra Roque from Norway. A couple of very, very fast young Norwegians actually making their way through the ranks in the under 23 men's UCI Cross Country World Cup. Dario Lilo heads to the line. Did some winning at the start of the last season, but sort of dropped off a bit. But a new team, one of the, uh, one of the bigger transfers actually off the off season from the Giant Factory Racing. But here is many people's favourite, Riley Amos, victorious in the cross country short track. Under 20 freeze. Yesterday afternoon, the American and the Ice Vest looks up for this one. There is confirmation of the start list as I am joined by the original Olympic champion, Bart Brenchens. Bart, it's good to be back with you, sitting alongside you. Are you excited about this season of under 23 race? Yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to this race. Of course, we had the short track uh, earlier today already. I was uh, doing uh, the show outside. Uh, it was, it was rather, you, rather you <laughs> than me. <laughs> Actually, yeah, the sun is burning here. Uh, it's really hot, especially with this humidity. That makes it even worse. And we saw also yeah, most of the riders in uh, ice vests. Yeah, little wet towels uh, with uh, ice cubes in it uh, around their necks. And that's also what they're going to do during the race, I think, in the feet and feet zone, tech zones. Yeah, I, f I keep on making this threat that I am going to get an ice vest to wear in the commentary booth. Sometime this season, I think I am going to have to don one because, yeah, as you say, not as much the heat, just the humidity here. Yeah, is. to cooling cell, to cool yourself down with by sweating, that's almost impossible with this high I've tried. humidity. I've tried. <laughs> but here we go, we're about to get under starters orders at the opening round of the UCI Cross Country Olympic World Cup for the under 23 men here in Maripura, Brazil. Under starters orders, wait for the lights to go green then. And green, they go, a bit of a false start yeah, there. A false start definitely was, and you can see it as well. Yeah, that is Sandra Roque got away from the line and ah, that must chaos further down crash. the order bench. Fights are taken out. So let's just see what happened here. What's the center of your screen? Chaos, yeah. 
Two or three Spanish riders rider involved in that 21. one. Ben Schweizer. No, it's no, it's not him. Sorry, that's another one. Oh, Paul Schell it was from Black Sphere team. Luke Paul Moyer. Schell. Luke Moyer out front. The start loop plus five. So the start loop is a bit different from uh, the original lap. A little bit shorter, but shortly they will entering the full course. That's where they're right. Yeah, yeah it's right. kind of uh, the start loop and cross country racing designed to thin out the, uh, the leading group. But this circuit here, Mayapur, is so wide as we see a replay of Rocket getting off the line. And there is that pile up just behind him. Yeah, there you go. Just a classic ripple effect of. Yeah, Paul Shell from the Lexwear team. He ran down. One rider getting into trouble, and then it sort of it does factor backwards on them. But I was going to say, Bart, the start loop designed to thin things out. But here in Mayapura, the whole track very wide. It's wide signed, uh, and also I expect uh, a tight racing on a course like this. Of course, there's still a lot of climbing involved, but punchy climbs. Most of them are punchy climbs. So you need to have a lot of power uh, not the long steep climbs as we sometimes see on one of the courses but on this course it's it feels like a, a short track course a long short track course uh, this course going to be yeah. olympic a course. long short track course in the bacon heat and high humidity yeah i think the heat definitely that will play a big role in today's race and yeah. this the field spread out one line that We're goes fast Look at the speed limit around this start loop. I think average speed in the UCI C1 race this, last week by 26 kilometers This per hour. section here where they are right now, Finn Trudlo leading with Luke Wittmann here. That's a bottleneck. And you can see as well, it's difficult to make it on your bike and especially a little bit further down. Yeah. The riders have to get off their bike and running and that's the smartest what some of the riders already immediately do. So Alex Malacarni, fraternity racing, leading ranked Brazilian has been swallowed up a wee bit still within the top 10 but this course is beautiful design as you can see here it's, it's more like an arena where the spectators can see the riders from their yeah, different angles many times it's really beautiful look what Luke Wittmann leading here for the first time taking that rock garden this is the handmade rock garden but not so many uh, difficulties for these riders they're flying over it quite fast yeah, this rock section, the first time we get to have a look at it, lined with crowds. Amos Reilly, the US rider. And then it goes up immediately, steep, followed by a steep climb, a little bit off camera, and the loose gravel, that makes it hard. Yeah, it is a loose surface here, and as you can see just from this fantastic drone shot that over the course of the week's practice, it, there does there is a groove that forms in the track the gravel clears away from it and if you do want to pass people you end up on that loose sort of kitty litter stuff yeah, and sometimes also some big rocks in between uh, yeah. and more, more dangerous for yeah technical problems like flat tires if you have to cross these sections so they head into the tech zone for the first time yeah normally this uh, second tech zone is only made for tech but uh, with these conditions they decide to uh, have it also for feeding, and that means mostly cooling down yourself, the riders. That looked like Luca Martin in the green off Orbea, heading towards the front of this one now, as they're still in the start loop, but really getting strung out quickly, Bart. Yeah, but you will see the, the riders, they were battling uh, constantly, actually, for good positions. Uh, probably they after a couple of laps, they will trust each other as well, if they're not leading or being in the best position, like the second and third place. But now, especially in the beginning, they all like to try out each other and try so to get away. Ignore that graphic, because Luca Martin has made his way to the front. And, and Finn Trudler, he's behind him. Yeah, Luke Trudler. Wittmann. I survived the opening exchanges in second place. Vidman, real big, big talent from uh, the Thomas Maxson squad of Ralph Nath. Here we go through the rocks section. Yeah, riders can take oh. different lines. Another Lex Weir rider who ran down here. It was, we saw um, Paul Shell, he was involved in that crash at the start. And now another Lex Weir rider. I don't know, I thought it was Leonard Kraya. I'm not sure, I couldn't see it. Yeah, big impact. Not the best place to have a crash. Probably one of the worst. <laughs> yeah. So there's, Mal there's Malacarni, the Brazilian, through your shot now. Yeah, nowhere soft to land in that yeah, rock garden. Luke Whitman leading. Luke, Luke Whitman heading to the riders right. Just tags that rock with his front wheel safely. 
behind him, Trudler. It's on the rocker. And now he's on fourth place, the Norwegian the rider who the finished speed in, The speed increases down here now. Yeah, these berms actually, they are, you feel the G-force because tight. of the speed. Yeah, yeah they are tight. tight. <laughs> wow, Luca Martin made a load of space up on Trudler through there. That last right-hander yeah, threw the bike into it. Yeah, after that uh, berm, you come out with so much speed, actually, that you can make... Uh, th that's, it's a climb, that one. It's quite a, a steep one, but you, you carry on so much speed till half of the climb, so it almost doesn't feel like uh, a hard one. You can see Luca Martin there took the... Uh, What's, it's called the B line on that side, but it's a really fast left hand berm that I think is actually yeah, the, maybe. The inside line has a lot of uh, beams. Actually, it's like a stair, mm -hmm. but outside, yeah, you can carry on much more speed. Yeah, up over these little rock sort of kickers in through the berms. This section, one of the hot spots we're expecting tomorrow for the crowds for the elite race, as they can see three or four big features. That looks like uh, Luca Marte is in for a good race. Second place. He had a good race as well in a short track, finished fifth, and that was yesterday. So different tactics, uh, strategies actually these days, like for the elite riders, we had the short track this today and tomorrow already uh, cross country. Before last year and before that, it was uh, always a bit more time in between. Yep. I think they hit the camera. Hit yeah. <laughs> Or either that, or the, ca camera, the camera operator has been overcome by the <laughs> savage humidity, or some kind of uh, creepy crawly up there. But ninth place last season in Lenzerheide, the cross country Olympic Trudler's best result. He had actually a, a, not his best season last year. We were struggling with the form, but this year it seems to be a new team for him as well. I remember, I remember talking about him in Nova Mesto, and we thought that he might be a name that came through, but he never kind of cracked it. I mean, his last race, but his last a, race. Uh, in the cross country XEO, excuse me, World Cup was 53rd in Mont Saint Anne. So, but he's a very strong uh, climber, but also this year very good start of the season. But you can see the riders are still very close together. Alex Malacana, the last rider of that group from Brazil, riding for the Trinity team. Yep, Luca Martin then, there's Dario Lilo in the National Champions jersey of Switzerland, one of the hardest National Champions jerseys to win. Malacarni in that checkered sort of 3D effect jersey of Trinity Racing now, staying on the back of Sandra Rocket. Yeah. So, yeah. a bit of confusion at the start, we've not heard anything from race officials that they're looking at anything in particular, I think it was just a jump. Uh, yeah, the riders, um, since last year, they have the lights, so not a whistle anymore or a gun, but the, the lights, they turn from red to green to the start. Alex Molikane, yeah. he is the Trinity team rider. On one of the brightest paint jobs in mountain bike racing on that Trinity Racing Specialized Epic World Cup. And you see the gold forks on the, oh, the first free bikes, actually. Fox. Uh, Fox. Yeah, it's a new fork. Yeah, new racing, racing shocks. They're celebrating 50 years. They've done so. Why not in an Olympic year with a gold fork? And Alex Molikana, he is with that uh, attendant, that uh, SRAM attendant system on his bike. Yep. New flight attendant. New dampers in those Fox forks as well. New grip dampers. So. Yeah, riders have to choose here for feeding. They have to come into the tech feed zone, and there's a transit lane where feeding or technical sport is not allowed. So you do lose a bit of time, and that is quite a longer outside yeah, line. Yeah, a longer outside line. That's uh, how they made it. But of course, everyone has to use it at some stage. So uh, yeah, maybe there are some of the riders they decide to take uh, a cold bottle of drink or some water in the second uh, tech zone. But uh, I think most of the riders have also used the first one. For there some is, drinks. There is that gold fox fork in front of Finn Trudler's cube. Yep. It went in very far. And for Luke Wittmann. I mean, Luca Martin, the you, same, the Obea rider. You can just see him. in those slow motion shots how well set up the bikes are. Just straight into the travel, nice that and controlled on the way back that up. The jersey of uh, Luca Martin looks a little bit white, more cool, actually. Interesting. Yeah, I did think that when he rolled the line, actually, it looks slightly baggier, sort of yeah, not as tight fitting. Baggy, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the pump track section at the top of the track, so difficult to actually pedal in the middle of this. You really have to get your timings and your rhythm right. 
We saw this section being key in the short track races earlier on this afternoon. If you make a mistake at the start of it, you kind of end up playing catch up the whole way through. Yeah, it goes slightly uphill uh, that uh, pump track section. So still the runners, yeah. even if they push hard with their body, they still have to pedal a little bit to get forwards. Uh, Luca Martet, Ventrutler, and then Dario Lilo, the national champion from Switzerland in the red jersey. Yeah, the pack being strung out slightly here now, just by the, the width and the speed of this track in Mayapura. This uh, zigzag climb, very steep, especially these corners. They look easy here, but if you have to ride it, it's more difficult. A lot of rocks are involved too. Great aerial shot there off the Atlantic Forest. And uh, getting more steep here to the top. Uh, very tight as well, it's only one line which is able to ride for the riders. So your order then, Martin, Trudler, Lilo, Riley, Amos, Wiedemann, Hudima, Malakarni, Rocket in ninth. And that's the Norwegian rider, Sondre Rocket. Oh, and it is Troubles. Yeah, this is uh, the start. Paul Schell, is it? Yeah, the, the Paul Schell, he had that crash from the start. Paul Schell, when I couldn't buy luck. But he's on his way again. Yeah, and it was his uh, teammate, uh, Leonard Kaya, who uh, made that mistake on the rock hard and had a crash. It looks like Luca Martin is just lifting the tempo at the front of this one, but uh, here Trudler. comes Finn Trudler now. He's launched his own attack. This is an attack. Lap one. Yeah, just before the highest point here on this loop. <laughs> Lap one, welcome to under 23 men's cross country <laughs> racing. <laughs> Some of the most combative racing we see all year tends to come from this category. Yeah, I mean, lap times compared to the men elite uh, from these riders, they're almost similar. Whoa. Luca Martin just getting a little yeah, bump there's off a, that bridge. There, there. There's another bridge where they will uh, jump over almost uh, as well. And that's a bit further on. Here it is, you can see, little jump. A lot of bridges, a lot of loops as well. Now they're coming under, in, under this bridge. Yeah, it's sort of a, it's a funny course, isn't it? It's quite compact without ever being tight. It's always fast and moving, but it comes it back does. on itself a lot, yeah, crosses itself yeah. quite a lot. I think especially, uh, yeah, the, the heat definitely will play a big role today. The humidity, but of course, it's uh, a mountain bike course, <laughs> and there's a lot of climbing involved, and also, and because of the high speed, it becomes also more technical. You're laughing, but this would have suited a Bart Brenchens in yeah, his prime yeah. down to the ground, wouldn't it? Definitely. <laughs> this would have been a happy hunting ground, as we see Riley Amos. They expect the average uh, speed of 25 k's an hour, maybe even a little bit more. Incredibly fast. Henrik Avancini told me this morning. And you see how important it is for the riders to cool themselves down, and that's what they do all the time. There we see that attack again from Finn Trudler before. And Luca Martin was pushing hard. What is that about Bart? Is that just that I could be going faster than this, or is it well, a bit of a psychological? It's, it's, or? No, it seems to be a bit more than that. I mean, uh, we will see in the next shot. Six seconds at saying on our yeah, clocks here. It's definitely so. a, a telling sign. Yeah, he's moving. Trudler is moving at the front of this one. The Swissman. Yeah, Finn Trudler did also a couple of uh, road races in the beginning of the mountain bike season this year. Maybe it helped him a little bit to perform better. 33rd at the UCI World Championships in Glen Tress, Trudler. Luca Martin, Bjorn Reilly. Bjorn Reilly. Reilly Absolutely Amos. flying through there. Dario Lillo, Alex Malakarne, Alexandre Udima. If you want to generate a crowd at a mountain bike race, you put a load of rocks somewhere, don't you? That's, that's where people love to go. These days, uh, yeah, it, it belongs to a mountain bike course. The Here. technical skills you need to have. Here is the race leader, then Trudler neatly does it through the rocks. Just going to the riders left there, then cutting back across seemed to work well, Bart. Yeah, what they almost do, these riders these days, is they're pushing their self, they're pushing their bike into the ground and then they lift themselves over the rocks so they almost don't touch the rocks Trudler just a bit of frustration there looked like yeah, he was he looking missed for the, the, the first bottle but there was a, a backup as how they call it for this cold drink yep cube already having taste victory this season Kira Bum. 
in the under-23 women's cross-country short track last night. It's good to see Cube back uh, in the scene. We haven't seen him for a long time, but now with a factory team back in the cross-country Olympic discipline. Yes, but they've, you know, been big in enduro and downhill, the gravity side of mountain bike racing for a long time. Good to see them back in amongst the cross-country race. I think you're right, Bart. That does look like a, a, mo a baggier jersey, perhaps, designed to sort of shed a bit of heat. But uh, Luca Martin, Come Riley on. Amos have sort of pinned Trudler back a bit here. Yeah, this is a very steep climb in the beginning with that switchback, and then it carried on for a long time, even in that uh, dense forest. Riley Amos, of course, won that cold, wet affair in Mont Saint Anne last race of last season. Also struck gold in the short track in Snowshoe, West Virginia, and took the win in Palar and Sala Andorra. Again, very cold and wet day in Andorra, that as well. So Amos can... Yeah, and he won the race last week in uh, Fayetteville. Horse category race, just uh, a category lower than the World Cups are. But uh, he showed his strength. Yeah, last season it really was... Um, it was all about uh, Boishy, Adrian Boishy versus uh, Riley Amos and um, Carter, the Canadian, and both Carter and Boishy up into elites this year, so Riley Amos will be hoping that... Yeah, to uh, win a World Cup or become a world champion, that's definitely his main goal for this year. The Brazilian rider. Yeah, Otavio Quiro de Souza. Nice national outfit for look, him. Look at Luca Martin. Yeah, he's carrying on a lot of speed in that berm over there. The big thing with uh, Martin last season, Bart, was it was kind of... The power was there, the technique was there, but it was really the, the psychological approach that you called it before he had that double puncture in Val de Sole Trentino, that he was attacking when he didn't need to attack, and that yeah. just opened you up to risk in this sport. Yeah, there was no reason for him to push that hard uh, anymore, but yeah, he did. He, uh, it, it went wrong for him, uh, technical problems, and it cost him the win. So different lines here as well, left and right, but at the end, it doesn't yeah, matter that go. much. Gives it a slightly nicer entry by about a bike width into uh, that left-hand corner. But Luca Matte, he's a very technical rider. And I think it's a course like this definitely will suit him. Uh, also, because of them, that many quarters the course has, it's constantly turning. It does that, actually, doesn't it? You are right. There's, there's not many straight bits no, on it. No, maybe here the, the, the finish straight and yeah. around to the feet zone. That's one it's of the... a long start finish straight and uh, will not... Will not will not be guilty of any spoilers but if you didn't catch the elite short track from earlier on this afternoon go and check it out what a pair of races we were treated to through this really fast bike park section then as they head back towards the start finish arena what a shot it is with that drone it's great isn't it's it so great and it's a very steep downhill section over there where the riders just went here we see martin getting past trudler at the front but the four at the front still together Martin, yeah. and Trudler, he, Amos and Riley. Here, here we, you could see the same. So riders, they're pushing themselves down. They're pushing their bike down on the ground and then they lift it just over that rock. They yeah, almost just don't float, touch. Just yeah. sort of float over. It's brilliant, doesn't it? Malacarne still in fifth. So the Brazilian going well. A lot of pressure on the Brazilian riders this weekend, Bar. It's, uh, you know, home support's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Uh, it helps so much. Home soul race. It helps so much, especially here in Brazil, lifted by the fans. I think it helps so much whenever Henry Gavancini is also at the same race and everybody's looking at him and you can just get on with your business. Yeah, but for him it was almost impossible to do his business when did we had that race in uh, Petropolis uh, did you see, some years did ago. Did you see the queue for autographs <laughs> this morning at the yeah, Oakley booth yeah. whenever Henrik was there? They are so patient, these uh, fans. Unbelievable. Over an hour yeah. for, you know, an autograph and a bit of face time with the man himself. Also graced the commentary booth during the Elite Men's Short Track with uh, Ollie Beckinsale and myself and Bart. Henry, he lived every inch of that race. He was glued to it like a fan. It was fantastic to be around. Luca Marte, really Amos. Trudler just dropping off... Uh, 
Fourth, yeah. fourth wheel now at the minute, and there's a little bit of a gap for him, and I wonder if Martin's just having a little dig here. Yeah, maybe he doesn't, this part of the course doesn't suit him so well. Looks like that a little bit, but he's such a strong climber, so probably he will, will come back again. What? Foot out for Alex Malacana here oh, on that. I wonder, oh, front flat puncture, tire. yeah, yeah front yeah. flat. That is why. Ooh, oh, taking disappointment it. He's Malacarne. not that far away from the technical, technical support. And he can ride here to the and the front flat. Signals. The easiest wheel you can change. The fastest, at least. Signals that help is required. Yeah, signing to the staff people of the team. Front wheel chains. Yeah. That's a drill. Here we go. Oh. There he goes again, a very quick yeah, change. Good stop that from the Trinity team. Luke Vidman just throwing some water over the thighs. Does, there it, add, he is. does it add another dimension to it, Bart having to cool as well as drink? You're, you're, it's another thing to do, I guess, isn't it? I mean, cooling, it's it's a big thing. What's Trudler just... No, 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 that's, uh, that's a little bit further down. That's not the leading okay, group. Uh, I caught my eye it. there. But it's a cube rider, definitely. It was, was uh, with, a, with a problem. He was waving to his staff, maybe a, a sign telling them for the second feed zone to him, to, to uh, the second tech zone to inform the other staff people, but that's still a way. So the three leaders together, Alex Malakana lost this group. You can see that sort of hump on the back of Bjorn Riley tends to be a, a sock filled with ice or something like yep. that, just to sort of release it on ice the top of your back. In it, in your neck, to cool himself down, it melts slowly. I don't think it'll melt that slowly today. <laughs> I, if that sees half a lap, I'll be impressed. He was that cube rider. From what we saw, he was waving to the staff people. It's Luke Moyer from Luke South Moyer, Africa. Yeah. South African just gesticulating that something's not quite right. We'll keep an eye on it. Looks okay from here, bike-wise. So maybe, as you say, Bart, just indicating um, for feed or a gel or... Yeah, I have to... The Leonard Kreier, that's uh, the, the German national champion. He's in that group. So the, the, what we saw, a crash early in the race on that rock garden. Um, must, must, must be someone else from the Lexware team. Yep, Lexware, right in amongst it. All action, right from the get-go. There is Alex Malacarney. Good, uh, good pit stop that from the Trinity team. Got him back out again. It's Luke Moyer and then Lennart Kreier. Sonder Rocke, the Norwegian riders in that group too. But meanwhile at the front, Luca Martin tap, tapping the way. And Rayleigh Amos second, and then we have Bjorn Rayleigh, the two USA riders. And they'll be happy with this, won't they, Bart? They'll, they'll rider right out front doing the work. They can just kind yeah, of... Yeah, seems to be like that. But it's also Luca Martin's pushing hard. He's not holding back at all. So track factory team and track future racing. Oh, he... He sort of gets a, a double bounce off that bridge every time, Luca Martin. It just makes me sort of wince and go, oh, here we go. But he manages to but get these the young riders, they're so skilled. To they're a lot better than me, that's fair <laughs> enough, yeah. I think I'm thinking about the crash I would have if it was me, not the crash he's going to have. Well, there'll be a factory team rider. Luca Martin pushing hard now, leading this race. Ventrudler a little bit off, nine seconds. He's on the fourth place. Yep, we've seen uh, Luca Martin's compatriot, Adrian Boishy, up in the elites for the first time this year, hoping to score himself a place at the Paris 2024 Games. How do you rate his chances, Bart? I mean, yeah, the Olympic Games definitely it's a, a main goal for most of these riders. Um, but I mean, also, yeah, we are missing here with Tom Pitcock, much of Vanderpool. So the chances for, <laughs> I don't know, it's it's. 
The Olympic Games, it's always something special. Uh, first of all, the riders uh, till the end of May, they uh, still have to qualify for their nation, uh, so the, the spots that you can have as a national team. So the top eight has two spots and only two spots. Imagine for France, for example, that they have maybe six strong riders. Every nation we've interviewed and chatted to this week, of which there have been many, whenever you ask them about that French elite men's Olympic team, it's always a laugh and a shake of the head, and I'm glad I'm not involved in it. Yeah, they had only also, yeah, France has only two spots, the maximum of two. You have to be in the top and eight for two be, spots. And that's kind of, it's one of the big draws tomorrow, isn't it? Because they're going to be decided over these next two weekends. These two weekends only? Yeah. Nova Mesa doesn't count anymore? No. Okay. And I think, yeah, Viktor Koretsky, he showed how strong he was uh, already earlier this year, but also last year. So... I think so. He will have one of the spots, and five of them that are still fighting for that second one with Saru. Who would you take? Yeah, I, for, I mean, Adrian Brasier, the youngster. I think he's a little bit too young. Saru, he's always there, he's very consistent. He's one of the cleverest riders, I always yeah, think, Saru. Yeah. His brain and his ability yeah. to process effort is fantastic. But then still, uh, they, they have uh, Titoa Carot of Thomas Criot, uh, Maxime Dubot. Marot, Dubo. Yeah. All very strong riders. I think I'd take Boishi. Why not? Let him have a go at it. I experience, experience for four years' time for the next one. Yeah, but maybe the last chance for John Saru to do the Olympics. True, true that. Yeah, <laughs> and, maybe being on third. And Jordan. it comes down to results at the end anyway. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Saru could win. You could see could Saru win in the Olympics. That would be a very Saru move. Yeah. And also, yeah, Luca Marte. He's he's strong too. Yeah, yeah, another yeah. young French guy. Yeah, the French all of a sudden for so long in cross country racing it was the Swiss we would talk about, but France, particularly when it comes to the the, the men's field, have come yeah. on really strong in the last two or three years. Yeah, but Pauline, don't forget the women's field too. She's eh? all right too. Yeah, she's not, she's not bad. Luana's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> fair point. Fair point, Bart. Yeah, yeah. Pauline Fran yeah. Bravo missing in action here from here in Brazil. Um, the the double, the double, double UCI world champion opting not to travel to Brazil. She's already won six races this season. She's in such a good shape. She's training with the man on the road all the time. Uh, Dylan Van Barle, of course, helping her as well. Emil's team, yeah, very strong. But a different approach of this season, planning, and it seems to be that it works for her. But a great point made by Alessandra Keller earlier in the week was, although everyone enjoys talking about the Olympics and it's such a big part of the sport, there's also a UCI World Cup overall title and a UCI World Champs title to win as well. So it's, they're not small things to win. They're not easy to do. No. And if you like to win it, you have to be there every, every race again. I'm impressed by Malacarney Bart here. He's in ninth. He's held yeah. on after that puncture. It, it, it cost him about maybe 20 seconds. It was a quick change, actually, what they did. Punctures in this sport can so often... It's, the, the actual psychological impact of them can be a lot more than the physical. Yeah, but uh, on that rock garden, it's easily done uh, a flat tyre, what we saw. As we see Dario Lilo there in the Swiss national champs jersey, yeah, down he, in he 19th. Had, he had a good start, but lost a little bit of time now. Giant factory off-road. Hard to say what's wrong with him. Maybe he's struggling with the heat, but at least he was very strong in that first uh, start loop and the first full lap. As we see, oh, Martin nearly coming together with Riley Amos at the bottom of, at the bottom of that double-line section. It seems to be that inside line, it's almost equal. I think you get a better exit off the B-line, though, to the right, because they seem to pick up speed. They seem to give a couple of bike lines. Oh, look at Martin, just having to open the knees up a wee bit there, suck the bike up underneath him. Yeah, it's a flat landing behind that big rock over there, not the best one. It's a it's a busy riding style, Luca Martin, and he always looks like he's <laughs> he's up against it. <laughs> he's pushing. Yeah, yeah, a little bit wild. Great to watch, though. Great to be back in Brazil as well, isn't it, Bart? Yeah, I mean the fans over here, the the atmosphere next to the course, it's so great. 
Yeah, we had a chat last night with uh, one of the guys, Luciano, who's been digging trails around here for... He kept changing. He, he, couldn't, he couldn't quite count them up. He was like, 15 years, maybe 20 years? No, over 20 years. And just so filled with emotion and so happy to have the UCI World Cup here and have the best riders in the world on their local trails. It's so great to see. Yeah, it's a great venue over here. And they have plenty of opportunities to build a track, but also everything around it. I mean... Yeah, the start-finish area, it's so beautiful built. It, it feels almost yeah. like an Olympic course. You you do you do sort of uh, run the risk of running into stereotypes, but Brazilians and sports, there is few things that they care about more or few countries that can match them for the passion that they have for any kind of sport, especially racing. And uh, the fans here have been absolutely overwhelming all week long, roaring absolutely everybody on you. You go to some countries sometimes and it's really only the home riders that get cheered on. But here in Brazil, it's everyone. If you're it's here everyone. and you're competing and you're an athlete, whether you like it or not, you're getting support. Yeah, and, then, and they expect a lot of spectators for tomorrow's Cross County. It's a great shot races. through here. You can just see that groove that has been cleared throughout the practice and the racing already. Get wide of it, and you kind of onto some slicker, looser gravel. Yeah, lap time is about uh, 11:20. Fast is 11:24. There is Leonard Crayer and Luke Moyer trying to get back on the back of that top four. It was Alex Malakana with the number three on his bike. So back in the race. So Crayer's 33 seconds off the front of the race, and it looked to me there like he was putting a shift in. Yeah, some fast action here on the, on this course. And also, this force, it's so dark, actually, if you are into it and riding into it as well. Yeah, with the glasses, the, the light, the vision, what the riders have, it's sometimes quite difficult. As we see, oh, Rayleigh Amos having to get the hands back on the bars, going for a bit of food there. Yeah, Rayleigh Amos also taking his gel, so he needs to have his sugars into him as well. Does the heat change anything in terms of the feed bar? Do you eat differently in the heat? Does the body process I mean, stuff differently? A little, bit, a little bit. You have to drink a little bit more than normally, and most of the time also uh, the, the drinks have their energy into it, so their sugar. So you have to balance it quite precisely. If you're drinking more wet energy, yeah, yeah, you have to eat less gels. I forgive my complete amateur ignorance, but I have noticed that in the heat, I have been less hungry since I've been here. Do you change much diet-wise off the bike? You need to have your sugars. I mean, you're burning at, at the same amount as normally when it's cold, of course. Maybe when it's cold. Oh, a crash over here. Crash for Cryer. Yeah, Leonard Cryer, he, he, uh, in that corner, just on the grass. Just as I was taking Maybe a drink he, of water myself. Yeah, Let's yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, there's a hand off the bar, flicks the bottle, then the back wheel, actually. The back wheel, it's seems to be that corner is a little bit wet from what i wonder if that's where people have been tipping bottles over themselves <laughs> <laughs> it could be they made it because there's nothing myself. else wet out there i'll tell you that for free <laughs> we had some rain but that's during the night and it but it dries so yeah, quickly but it, it had almost evaporated before it hit the ground <laughs> strange that he had that crash his sli it's, it's rare, rare, it's rare away. that you see a back wheel go and not a front wheel i was waiting to see the classic front wheel crash there but yeah. No. no, so but coming back uh, to your nutrition, I mean, uh, your sugars, your fast sugars, uh, the gels, what you need to have to take your energy, what you need to have to take with your drinks, it's important and also in warmer conditions. So, out front is currently Amos, Martin and Riley. Finn Trudler with Alex Malakarne, the Cube rider and the Trinity rider. There's Vidman. Rocket. And then Kaya. Kaya's done well to get himself by. He didn't lose too much time in that crash, but he just lost a little bit of momentum. So we have seen three Lexware riders who went down today. It'd be a quiet dinner in that house. There is Luca Martin then spinning that gear. Amos looking good for me here, Bart. He's just it seems he's to be sitting in this group. He's happy to let Martin do the work. He doesn't yeah. look like he's overly exerting himself too much. Yeah, tactically, you have to be strong these days as well. And if you can save some energy for the last few laps, why not? 
And Luca Marte, he's spending a lot of energy into this race so far. I think that's just Luca, Luca's way. I think that's yeah, just that's what the, he does. That's the way how he's riding. Aggressive style. It was Finn Trullo. This part suits him really well, this climb. He's a strong climber, you can see that yeah, he's here. He's working his way back onto Looks the like back that. of him. I'm yes. just seeing, is that Bjorn Riley yep. just you dropping off the back slightly? So an attack from Martin here. He must mark some back. Riley covers it off, gets yeah, back he, on. He might have made a mistake on that zigzag climb. It's not that easy for these riders to stay that close together. He's back on the wheel. Riley Amos in the second place. A little bit of style there from Luca Martin. Now, really, Amos, he won oh. the short track yesterday. Finn Trudler. Trudler. He can see them, and that is a huge psychological boost whenever you're putting that effort in to be able to see your prey in front of you. I think he will come back to the leading group, chasing Hart now. Riley just seems to ship yeah, a couple he, of bike lengths every now and again. I'm just wondering if he's struggling slightly. He, he's struggling. It looks like that. Yeah. Look how low Trudler gets yeah, yeah, over yeah. the top tube. Aerodynamic position. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if it will help here. I think at this stage it's anything. But, but look at him. He's accelerating all the time out of the saddle. He just goes past Riley as well. Well, Immediately, he doesn't wait at all. He's feeling strong here on this part. What do you do now, Bart? Once you've made the catch, you have to you have to recover a little bit of that. Two hand, two handed take for <laughs> Luca Martin. <laughs> Just to be sure, he's not busy enough. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sometimes also the bubbles are wet from outside and that was a nice that was a nice sock that he just missed and bjorn really he is without any gloves and no problems to grab that bottle for him i think it's what you said they the riders they're cooling themselves down and that's all in that corner actually so they made it slip here you laughed when i said that no, and now I you've, come, you've no. come back around to the idea <laughs> i've been thinking about it the whole time <laughs> <laughs> i honestly think that's, that's where all... it is because they get the cooling bottles at the end of that zone <laughs> no i saw the grass was greener over ah, there. Ah, that's what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Grass is always greener part. That's the problem. <laughs> there is Riley Amos still welded to the back of Luca Martin. Interesting, this race. Yeah, this one's heating up nicely. Under 23 men's is always a good cross country Olympic race because. Aggressive style. It's aggressive. Of, yeah, some, from the start. some of the tactics slightly <laughs> ill judged at times, but always aggressive. This group of four. Fin, oh. Fin now he's coming back to the leaders. Bjorn Riley, one of the most stylish young cross country racers out there. Rides that downhill style with the, the heels dipped. Very technical rider. He can do everything on his bike. And a very punchy off camber climb this is where the riders are right now. The front two just seem to be able to put a couple of bike lengths in when they want now and again and stretch things and they come back together. And yeah, they, they might slow down now a little bit when they know Ventullo is coming back. They're probably they are surprised about that too. So the, the speed might slow down a little bit. Entering that uh, second tech zone right now, taking probably some bottles and water for themselves as well to cool down. Yeah, I think that That's was a, do. a good decision from the UCI and the organizers to allow yeah. that extra zone for the for the water. It's normally to... normally just tech assistance in the second zone, but because of the conditions here today, nearly 80% humidity, they have allowed a second uh, feed and bottle zone there. Yeah, it's difficult to describe how uh, hard it is actually to uh, perform in conditions like these. So, so tough. Just, just to get air in. Yeah. And you have to cool yourself down with drinks and with water over yourself, ice water. We saw Sam Gears finish that short track race and just dump a full gallon jar of water over his head. And yeah, that's the best you can do. That's about all. Yeah, I know there are there are ice baths around the place as well. And a group of four, but Bjorn really he's suffering a little bit. Alex Malakane. So three out of five laps in.
Yeah, Bjorn really is suffering at the speed of Luca Martin, that leading group of four, almost entering the highest point of the course. Wow. And then a small mistake. Oh, and they're off and running behind him. Yeah, what went wrong over there? I don't know. Maybe too close it's together. It's definitely not wet on that part of the track. Very we dusty. Could, we could say that. I don't know what went wrong. Interesting. It'd be, good to, it'd be good to see that one again, actually, if we can. With Rocke. Sonder Rocke behind him. And then Luke Wittmann, the rider in the red jersey. Group of three. Luke Wittmann, very, very big frame, big rider. Should go well around yeah, here. Yeah, a little bit of a gap now because of that uh, crash. Is this, think... the, is this the gap that Amos needs just to stretch the elastic band that bit more and put some pressure on? Let's just watch this gap from the drone shot. Can they close him back up now? Out of the, pet, out of the saddle and pushing on Amos. Finn Trudler is second. Finn Trudler is nearly buzzing his chin on his front tyre. He's getting that far over the front of that bike as Riley Amos comes down the ramp through the shipping container. A very fast section it's over flat here. Flat out through there, yeah. yeah. You kind of have to pull yourself back over the handlebars of the front wheel, and stay they, on the front axle. If they come out of that container, actually, yeah, there's a nice jump as well. Yeah. It reminds me, actually, of the, the downhill course in Leogang. You know that tunnel they fly out up on the wall right there? Riley Amos then, Trek Factory Ace and Pirelli cracking on at the front and first. It's a, it's a really, really great section at that top part of the course where the spectators can move around and see the racers so much. Yeah, you can see them for a long time. On this Seven arena. seconds now. Amos is the one. He's not holding back. He's pushing on through there, I'll tell you that for free. Riley Amos has decided now might be the time on lap three. On the big roll right. Taking it low to make it a bit shorter. And that is the, that's the beauty part, isn't it, of being as technically good as Riley is, that you can still make time on those descents when other people are trying to recover. Yeah. Yeah, they're pushing hard, not only in the climbs, but also in the descents these days. You can see the gap between fourth and fifth gives you an idea of how hard they're pushing on at the front. Alex Malacarney, 44 seconds off the leader, Riley Amos. So the, gra the gap between these top four is growing in the rest of the field. Yeah, it's the right moment for Riley Amos to push hard now, to opening the gap. Finn Trutler, he's leading that chasing group, the Cube Rider, Cube Factory Racing. Quick drink from Riley Amos. And as we always say, Bart, they'll, aside from the tech feed zones where they can feed and take on food, they'll have areas on a lap that they'll already have marked as, I'm going to drink there. And Yeah, that, uh, that's what they do. They, there are some sections, and it's not everywhere where you can have your drinks. Riley Amos looking incredibly Four. strong here. Yeah, he showed his strength uh, last week already in Fiat Field, where he won the horse category race. With some strong names in that race, too. Yeah, every rider likes a different approach into the season with different amounts of racing. We talked during the uh, Elite Women's Short Track about the likes of Rebecca Henderson, seemed to do a lot of racing before the season, other riders not so much. Yeah, but she had that uh, ankle injury uh, some weeks ago, so I was really surprised about her result actually in the short track. Riley Amos just gapping out of that little corner there and then cracking on the start finish straight. Yeah, he won the short track yesterday, I'm that's why say, he has the number one on his bike. The double could be on here, unless this chasing group can work out a way to pin him back. Yeah, they have to work together, these three. Ten seconds only, two laps to go. Yeah, but it was seven seconds not so long ago. He's extending his lead a little bit. Here we go in this, in this treacherous zone that we both see. <laughs> Let's see this corner. There is a little rut forming there. Yeah. I'm, uh, I have an eye for a rut and there's one forming in there. Through the mud section. The mud section, <laughs> the only one on this Luca course. Mar Luca Martano though, looks like he may be getting the move on and has decided maybe the pace not quite high enough. Alex Malacane. Listen to the support from Alex Arnie here, gel. the Brazilian. And look, look Moya from South Africa.
Yeah, the teams, team staff playing a big part here this weekend, having to make sure their charges are well supplied with food and water. Sonder Rocke with Lennart Kraaier. You mentioned before uh, before the start of the race, Bart, uh, the Norwegians always big on heat camps. They do a lot of that. They do a lot of heat training these days. Heat training comes almost similar to altitude training. That's what they said. They have the experience with that. So maybe that helped them as well uh, for Sonder Rocke, for example, but also William Handley, another Norwegian rider who did very well in the short track yesterday. It was Ivan Aguilar Villegas. From Mexico. Yeah, the top ten. Mexican having a good ride here. Second highest South American. Yeah, I think definitely if you are living in a warm country or you have warm conditions, also like uh, Luc Moya, for, for example, in South Africa, I think it helps to perform better in these conditions. With Rebecca Henderson, maybe for the same from Australia, maybe the, not with the humidity, but they have everywhere, but definitely the heat. Yeah, we talked to Alan Haverley yesterday about it, and he said, Yeah, the heat, you know, being South African, he's used to handling the heat, but he said it's, it's the humidity more than anything else. That is the issue as the chasing group. 13, 13 seconds yeah, yeah, yeah. now, he's, he's chipping away, he's extending the lead. These tight corners, not that easy to make. No, not a full chat with a heart rate through the roof. So just for reference then, Dario Lilo. Yeah, we don't know exactly the reason why he dropped back that much. Yeah, if, he, he, if he did have a technical problem. Now, yeah, in 20th, just came past our commentary booth. So Amos looking controlled, Bart, doesn't look too busy. He will be, of course, but looks in control and is just tapping out a rhythm. Yeah, and already last year we had some great results in uh, racing. Interesting, though, Bjorn Riley currently holding the fastest lap with an 11.24 on lap four. With a point six of a second. Oh, sorry, difference. lap one, sorry, excuse me. Over that bridge. Timing screen, at least it's not working at the moment. Yeah, the timing screen has just uh, had a bit of a glitch and has shown uh, one of the KMC Ridley MTB racing team riders leading the race. So Bart's well Str happy. Str struggling with the heat, I yeah, think. Struggling with the heat, yeah, struggling with the heat as well. That man doesn't seem to be. Right, nope. Amos. Uh, he's leading. Let's just see what the gap stands at at the minute. So it was 13 seconds. That looks slightly closer to me. Yeah, but still, I mean, nine, nine yeah. on, it's not over yet. Especially, it seems to be that Finn Trudler, he's feeling very strong on that uh, long climb of the course. I think Finn Trudler is adopting that I'm going to go until I can't attitude to this race. He keeps digging, he keeps attacking. And yeah. I wonder if he's just gone past Bjorn Riley and gone, you know what, I could be traveling quicker than this. And as long as they can see each other, he will be motivated as well to close that gap. Hugely important in cross-country racing. But on this course, with so many turns, it's not that easy to see each other for such a long time. Amos then, nine seconds the difference. Luca Martin, 14 seconds off him. So Martin just being distanced slightly by uh, Trudler and Riley. Malacarney, nearly a minute off the front of the race for Trinity Racing, but still looking strong. Had that puncture early in the race, Malacarney front puncture. So what could have been really? Riley Amos looks like he's on his home trails there, doesn't he? Just Yeah, but I've been uh, watching the training, uh, not only from these riders, but the way how the, the riders flying over these rocks, that's yeah, impressive to see that from the side. 
A lot of the modern cross-country race bikes, the wheelbase increasing as well. Not necessarily the suspension travel, but they're getting longer. And Kent de Gallagher, technical uh, coach at Cannondale, said to me that that's actually it's as beneficial for them as more suspension because it gives the rider room between the wheels to attack sections like that. Yeah, I mean st stability of, of, a, of a bike, it's 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 so important too, and also the geometry. Um, yeah. The tires getting wider, uh, 2.4. That's almost, yeah, more standard than uh, something special. But uh, yeah, what uh, Kenta Gallagher said, yeah, the, the geometry, also the, the suspension, it's more slack these days. Yeah, uh, and it makes the bike more stable and easier to make the technical uh, sections very fast. It's kind of a you don't know it's a, it's a snake eating itself really isn't it it's you don't know are the speeds getting higher because the bikes are going faster or because the speed speeds are higher the bikes have to go faster but certainly cross-country racing never been more aggressive in terms of descending yeah and definitely it's it's a process and a never-ending process uh, constantly so uh, yeah, the, the bike technicians are working on that uh, with suspension with uh, and also the mechanics actually and that's the feedback from the what the riders uh, gave them so 11 seconds now, so Riley Amos has stemmed the losses slightly, Finn Trudler progress yep. being halted slightly, and so I wonder if he just 13 needs... again. I just wonder it's if he needs Bjorn Riley to get in front of him and have a dig here. Luca Martin gritting the teeth. It is a small gap, but I mean, the race is not over yet. No, we saw, we've seen plenty of punctures so far in this race. They can always play a part as well, Luca Martin knows. But at least I think it's going to be a short race. If you see now, uh, lap times around 11.30. The start loop plus five, they did. So it's going to be a short race. Alex Monacano and Luke Moya. A little bit further down. The Brazilian rider leading this chasing group of two. The number three on his back. Yep, number 13 on the back of Trudler. The Brazilian rider, he will have plenty of support here next he's to the going, cross. He's going backwards at a bit of a rate, Malacarni, though, though that's another 11 seconds since we last checked in. So I just wonder if the pace at the front of this one, or the heat, or both, starting to play, starting to pay a factor. Riley Amos for that inside A line. Using his dropper seat post, he brought his seat down. To make these steep descents a little bit easier. Amos is flying here, you know, Bart. In a good shape this early in the season. Yep, second fastest time with an 11.24.8 for his first lap. Riley Amos, Bjorn Riley still holding out. Luca Martin third in that particular competition. Yeah, I'm wondering if uh, Willie Amos can make it to the Olympics as well in the qualification. I mean, most of the time, actually, these uh, youngsters in the 23 riders are not able to uh, qualify for that. But it's different for every nation. Yep, the US, you'd have to say, Christopher Blevins. U.S. national champion would be a shoe in nine seconds. Nine seconds, so it's also so, late in a bit. And Trudler's disappeared off the back of Riley now, if that's to be believed. So Bjorn Riley, just as I say it, has attacked off our screens. So track factory followed by track uh, future racing. Yep, stars and stripes waving high over round one this year's UCI Cross Country Olympic Under-23 Men's World Cup. Riley Amos just made the track a little wider for himself to get a better entry to that. Oh, that's a dab of foot there, so a bit dusty. Yeah, it's loose gravel. There it's is slippery. that gap, so Bjorn Riley. <laughs> He's coming back. Bjorn Riley's pulled the pin here as dropping Finn Trudler and is in pursuit of Riley Amos. He's pulled him back to nine seconds, so he's got about a lap and a bit to go. But it seems to be this is also less than 20 seconds, 19 seconds what's on screen. Not sure, but it seems to be these riders coming back to uh, Riley Amos, who is leading this race. Small gaps in between the riders. 
Luca Martin just trying to stretch the back out slightly there before he tipped it left to head back into the forest again. Yeah, the speed is high. Seven seconds only now for Bjorn Rayleigh. Yeah, alarm bells ringing in Waterloo, Wisconsin. <laughs> one, of the, one of the young riders is heading towards one of the factory riders. 13 seconds for the third place, Finn Trittler. We could be set for an absolute belter of a final lap here in Mayrapora. And here we have the number four in the race. Luca Martin, he's been nothing but not entertaining today. Amos picking his way down through the trees perfectly. The final lap, if they cross the line now. Yeah, we are heading into the final lap here of round one of the UCI Cross Country Olympic World Cup for the under 23 men. Riley Amos leads the way, but there. Poor Bjorn Riley in the he is coming back. For the first time in a long time in the same shot, it's Bjorn Riley. Six seconds. Absolutely nothing in it. The riders can hear the bell for the last lap, the final lap. Yeah, we expected tight racing, but that's what it is. Into the feed zone again for all these four. To cool themselves down, another drink, another cold drink. This one is bubbling up nicely now. Six Out of the saddle for Luca Martel to accelerate as quick as possible. Standing on the pedal. Just he has left. 55 minutes into an effort and sprinting out of the tech feed zone. Back on the hunt of the front of the race, Luca Martin. There is Bjorn Riley, the man in second place at the minute by Just. We've got seven seconds on our screen in the booth. It's saying six seconds on the graphic. Trudler's not done yet either. Yeah, now this part of the course suits uh, Finn Trittler really well. Are we looking at one battle or two battles here, Bart? Do you think? Oh, Luca Martin swung wide there, and I just <laughs> wondered if that was a puncture. That's his style. I'd say he's just using every inch of a very wide track. Luca Martin, here's the man in the front of the race, though. Riley Amos has controlled this one for the majority of it, but he could about to be under a bit of pressure from that man on another Trek bike. Yeah, he has to push hard, Rayleigh Amos. Bjorn Rayleigh now into that corner. He's second place. Now we have Finn Trudler on third place. Some small gaps now. 17 seconds back for Finn Trudler. Alex Malakane, a minute 17 on the fifth place. Malakarni's impressed me today, Bar. It would have been easy, I think, for all the home support and the pressure to get too much for him and to blow up. He had that puncture, but he's kept that up. He's in fifth at the minute. Yeah, great race. But he have been racing here before. It's a big national race, this, isn't it? Yeah, in Henry Gavancini told me they did already uh, five times uh, races uh, in the last in the fi last five years here on this course. Dale, dale, national dale, champs dale, they had, dale. so they are used to ride in these conditions, right? they're used to ride on this course. It always helps a little bit. And you see how dusty it is, also the drivetrain is very dusty. Dry. Yeah, difficult to get grip as well whenever it gets that dry and sort of talky blown out. We were predicted a, a lot of rain for the yeah, weekend I mean, at the start of the week, but it hasn't really materialized. There was a bit last night, but that we, was... We brought everything with us from uh, Europe, uh, like mud tires uh, to be prepared. But luckily, it's, <laughs> it's dry. I've got because they, we had, they had some rain on Monday uh, evening. Uh, yeah. I have a jacket in my bag that has remained in my bag. It hasn't seen the light of day here in Brazil just yet, but Riley Amos on the number one bike. Next week, another race here in Brazil, Russia, <laughs> and a second shop. round. Very different track from what I've been told as Okay, well. I'm wondering. A bit more technical, be. bit more technical. Riley Amos, though, he still looks in great shape, Barb. Yeah, fast. Let's see what the gap is. 15, Extending 14 again. seconds. Well, he will have team staff on the course, and they will have let him know that this man, Bjorn Riley, is coming, and Riley Amos has just lifted the level a wee bit. There's a little bit, only four seconds in between the numbers two and three. But a little bit of time for Rayleigh Amos to play with. 13 seconds. I wonder if Finn Trudler has got anything left in the tank, if he can get himself into second place. What are we looking at here? It's Amos. Taking, right to his hand. Taking a double. I think that's the first time we saw that someone is taking that double jump. Right to his hand, very far in the bars, doesn't Actually, he? I always is. think. Yeah. Amos. 
Maybe to make himself a little bit more aerodynamic. Has a look faster. A little look over the shoulder. Look. Yeah. And that's why he accelerated again. 13 seconds. Not that much. In we'll the final lap. Will have seen something that potentially he didn't like too much. So got the foot down, got back on the gas. Bjorn Riley. Quite a big necklace bar for uh yeah, for a very a weight conscious sport. <laughs> The necklace here for Finn Trudler as well. Yeah, lighter. Who is on third place. Super Lee respect necklace for Finn Trudler. Bit lighter. So 15 seconds, yeah, Riley Amos has obviously got a wriggle on and decided that attack is the best form of defense after all. Leading this race. On the beams, over the beams. The speed bumps. They're awkward, though. They're just really <laughs> awkwardly spaced. Not nice at all. I think they made it because of the speed bumps you have here uh, on the roads everywhere. They're pretty savage. They're more like jumps. You can't <laughs> you, you can damage your car, seriously. Yeah, I'm actually quite relieved I don't have a higher car for this one. But Ready Amos neatly through the rocks. The Brazilian flag waved on. They would like to have seen Alex Malacarni perhaps more towards the front of this one. Pure Riley. Through the rocks for the last time on lap five. Finn Trudler on third place. We'll have him in sight. Yeah, four seconds in between the numbers two and three. It's almost nothing. Yeah, I wonder if we're heading to a sprint for the line for second place here. And that's Luca Martin. Yeah, his uh, his attacks faded slightly. Set the pace for so long over the first two laps of this race. Twelve seconds. Jovan Riley came back 13 again. Yeah, four seconds of difference between Riley and Trudler. Not much at all. A bit still. Not that big. One thing this has told me, Bart, is that we are in for a very entertaining year of under 23 men's XCO. I mean, this in. category is always so interesting to watch. I always, always think as well with this category, there's always somebody who arrives halfway through the season who all of a sudden finds form and starts chipping, chipping, yeah, chipping. Yeah, yeah. That's how the development of, of the rider sometimes goes. Like uh, Rayleigh Amos, we saw him suddenly last year at just, the end of the yeah. season. He was so strong. And it can be just one result. One yeah, result can make the difference. Yeah the confidence what these riders need to get well Riley Amos brimming with confidence now and on his way presumably and there was Bjorn Riley at the bottom of that climb they can see each other for such a long time here on this climb I just don't know if Trudler's got enough in the tank you know you see different style sitting in the saddle where Riley Amos was Accelerating out of the saddle, and that's a great. That must be a great feeling for Amos Bart. He knows that he's got the reserves of energy too. If he needs to buy himself some more time, put an effort in on one sector. Yeah, and at the end of this climb, actually, that's the highest point. From there on, it's mostly downhill to the finish line. Of course, still some uh, sections uh, where they have to pedal hard, but mostly downhill. Luca Marte, he lost a little bit of time, but no one behind him. He's on the fourth place. These are the numbers five and six in the race. Yeah, Malakarne and Moyer. Strong ride for Luke Moyer. I'll tell you, if Moyer beats Malakarne here, you might have to get a security uh, detail to escort him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> the clever move might be to let Malakarne through the Brazilian. The numbers five and six in the race. Oh, Amos kicking up the dust on the way through. Little double drop section round the berms. Dream scenario, first race of the season, commanding win, short track double. Double, yeah. It shows his strength, his form. And being the pre-season favourite part, it comes with pressure as well, presumably. It is. But definitely, yeah, he has his form. That's what he already showed in the last few weeks. And then it doesn't matter what kind of course you have, what kind of conditions you have. If the form is there, we will show it. Let's see how aggressive he's still riding at the end of the race. Yep, super aggressive stuff from Riley Amos. Just to be sure. To 
Uh, 13 seconds. But that really is, I mean, you know, that's, that is the modern cross-country racing style, isn't it? Attack every single yeah, inch. Th yeah, <laughs> that's how it is these days. We there's, saw Nino Scherter, no time to... Nino Scherter and Lenzerheide last season. Every yeah, shot we yeah. saw him. And I, I remember from Pick Peters a couple of times too. Yeah, yeah. Constantly attacking. Leo Gang. Leo Gang, she attacked every single inch of that track, didn't she? And yeah. More and more, that's what we're seeing. It's not about being good on one climb or good on one descent. It's absolutely every millimeter. Luca Marte in the green. That's the number four in the race. From this drone shots. Yeah. As it picks up, there's Trudlin. So the drone is flying backwards on this course to pick up some riders. There must be Luca Marte. Here he is on the fourth place. So lap five, Luca Marte through this descent. Let's see if he does it for the last time. That's Bjorn Reilly, the second place. Bjorn Reilly, 11 seconds currently. The gap At to. Least. The race leader, Riley Amos. He had a good dig at him for a while, but then Riley just uh, turned the afterburners on, I think, and bought himself slightly more space. 11 seconds now. 22 it's back to Trudler. It's not that long so anymore. Riley has done well there, you know. A very strong ride for Bjorn Riley. And Luca Marte. Luca Marte looks tired now, Bart. Yeah, he was attacking in the beginning of the race, in the first few laps. I right. say that like you should be surprised five laps into the cross-country Olympic race, but he does. He doesn't look the same rider he did a couple of laps ago. But plenty more races this year for Luca Marte to entertain us. Strong rider he is. Yeah. Plenty more opportunities for him to uh, to wow us. Slight puff of the cheeks there from Riley Amos. Knows he just has to tick these sectors off now. Doubles across there nicely. Nice and accurate despite the fatigue. And here he goes. Third time's a charm. Riley Amos what a takes start of the, the season. win in Mayapura, Brazil. The opening race of the season. He does a double, wins the short track, wins the cross country Olympic. Bjorn Riley crosses the line in second. Happy with that. Trek Future Racing, Finn Trudler, rightly so, should be happy with that as well. If there was an award for most aggressive rider, he'd probably take it, Bart. Superb performance from him. Three happy riders crossing the line. Ah, look at Martin on fourth place. This one will hurt from our town. Yeah, he came so close. To be off the podium after, try after that effort, difficult one, but... But As I, mean, I say, you can't win them all. No, but yeah, he came almost equal in strength with, it, with the winner, Riley Amos. But he did it. Riley Amos, Bjorn Riley, good friends off the bike. And USA, 1-2. On top. Two big, big talents. Trudler could just about get the bike stopped there to congratulate the winner. <laughs> big, big respect between these young riders. But this man... Riley Amos has started this season even better than he ended last season. Nothing in between these three, nothing in between these four. Here we go with Sprint Malacarney trying to get on the back of Moyer. Moyer. See if he does it. I keep that bike rolling yeah. to the to the van in the car Six. park now. <laughs> Sixth place for the Brazilian Alex Malacarne. Good result from Malacarne that as well though. And Luke Moyer on fifth. And really the Amos has emptied the tank. Yeah. It showed how hard it was. That's how you do it though, Bart. That's how you start a season with a double. With a double, yeah. Nothing better than that. Sondre Rocker from Norwegian. Norway. Yeah, the big, the big Norwegian crossed the line. Seventh place. Strong Good result. finish. Yeah, and Lennart Reier, the German champion. Yeah, the Drift King. Eighth place. Won't be happy with that one.
beautiful venue. Stunning, yeah, really absolutely. I was just thinking that, you know, stunning, stunning venue here in Mayapura. They've done so well with the track as well. And I tell you what, that has whetted my appetite for the elites tomorrow. Yeah, it will bring some uh, tight racing. They will decide as well how many laps, or so probably a little bit more. Of course, it was a very short race. And you have that unpredictability of the heat and the humidity, and it can just change a race within half a lap, can't it, all of a yeah, sudden? Yeah, but I think also the, the, lap, the, the, the course conditions, they became so much better from all uh, the training the riders did. There's the Mexican, Villegas, across the line. In ninth, Matis Gay, home in tenth, ahead of Pyle. Rennsteun Romane sprint out, I think, Luke Whitman. 12th and number 13 in the race. As Bart Brenchens punches the air in the, in the commentary, but it's great to see a sprint go the way of one of your own riders. Strong ride for Rennsteun Romane. Big rides up and down that top 15, really, top 20. I think any, uh, any result in these conditions is a big one, but Riley Amos, as I say, Bart, that one will mean a lot because he controlled that perfectly. He did. Never and looked in trouble. Taking the double. <laughs> Never looked in trouble. Let uh, Luca Martin attack early on. Yeah, stayed, doing the work. Stayed with him and then went. And whenever he went, he stayed gone. Yeah. I think they made a little bit of a mistake somewhere on that climb just before the highest yeah, point of right, the course where we, where we saw that dust coming up. But how often but have we seen Nino Scherter over the years yeah. being oppor an opportunist? Whenever and whenever opportunity presents itself, you go. Don't yeah, ask and, questions. Yeah, and these riders, they feel exactly when the course is that fast, when the, the gaps in between the riders are, are almost nothing. Yeah, you have to take any, every opportunity. And that's what uh, Rayleigh Amos did. Still, he had to work hard for that. It was Riley Amos, under 23, cross country Olympic and short track victory. We saw the emotion coming across the line. Tell us how this feels right now. Oh, it hurts a lot. Um, unreal. I'm so happy, but those boys made me work for it today with everything in me. Like, just so over the limit, but I had the gap. So, like, you just have to keep pushing, keep pushing all the way to the line. Like, oh, I had blown up so hard and like just was so empty but when you have the lead it's like you can't do anything but keep fighting for it so sorry i'm just trying to recover a little bit but oh thank you it was an amazing effort we saw that huge attack you were patient towards the start but it was a very very fast start yeah. how much did you have to dig when you had the lead bjorn was coming in second tell us about how hard it was to dig at that point in the race yeah, when I got the gap, I was a bit lucky. Like, I kind of just moved around Luca, and, like, he had a little fumble, uh, just, like, cross wheels behind me, and, like, they had a little get-off on the climb. So I, I just had a tiny gap, and then it kind of stayed between, I think, like, 5 and 15 seconds for the whole rest of the race. So when you're in that position, it just hurts so bad because you can see him the whole time, and, like, you know, he wants it just as bad as you, and he's digging and digging and digging. But... It's always a pleasure to battle with Bjorn. Like, he works so hard. We both work so hard. Um, and we're just best mates. So, so, so happy for him and happy to go 1 2 with him for the USA today. Well, it's a 1 1 for you. It's a fantastic start. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> there you go. Best mates off the bike. But you were right, Bart. He clocks that a little coming together. Clever, clever racing. Yeah, but still very hard what he said, the conditions and also the, the, the little gap what he had. And he knew uh, Bjorn Riley was uh, just behind him uh, 10 or 15 seconds all the time. And it wasn't an easy win. Riley Amos then is your winner. Ahead of Bjorn Riley, Finn Trudler, Luca Martin, Luke Moyer in fifth. And then Malacarne, Rocky, Crayer, Viegas, Gwey. Kunison van Manen in 12th. Ahead of Wiedman, won that sprint. Roland Lambert, 14th, Schweitzer. And Lee Dario Lillo down in 25th, ahead of Ethan Rose from Trek Future Race, near the strong start. All action here in Maripora, round one. Here are the highlights. So there was a slight issue at the start. Yeah, I mean, a kind of a false start. I don't know what went wrong. It was at least Sonder Rocca who was the first run. Sonder Rocca kept going. 
And there was a pile up behind. Yeah, Paul Shell, he went down at the start line. Bent the handlebars round, but Luke Vidman got round the outside at the top of this first climb on the start loop. And you know how that shows how important a start is all the time. Finn Turtler, he was the first one who attacked when Luke, when, uh, Luca Marte was pushing hard. Later on, it was uh, Luca Marte who was leading many times here in this race. Over the rocks, the handmade rock garden. Yeah, there was a big crash in there early in the race, but not in the front group, who this group of four really were the pick of the litter all race long. Finn yep. Trudler. Riding closely together, these four, for a long time. Trudler was all action. Malacarney was with them as well until this front puncture really put him out of contention. Yeah, it took him a bit of time to change that front reel. And now he had that crash. And there was that but big slide out from Craig. Yes, it cost him a little bit of time too. But these four, they came together, battling for the win. Bjorn really now here on the fourth place, and Finn Trittler in front of him. Luca Matteri, he put a lot of effort into this race. But really Amos, most of the time, very close to him. And there we had that little crash of Trittler and Luca Martin, And it was really Amos who went away with a small gap. 10 seconds, sometimes a little bit more. Yeah, Amos couldn't believe it, despite all his efforts. Look at what it meant to him, Riley Amos. Taking the double. Taking the double and career cross-country Olympic under 23 win number three. Bjorn Riley still got plenty of style in his back pocket. Second Over the place. moon to finish second behind one of his good, good friends, Riley Amos. I wonder how long that'll that'll stay uh, nice and polite and convivial. That, but <laughs> yeah, sometimes they motivate and they lifting each other as well to a higher level. If they train together, riding together, training together, and that's what they do. Riley Amos and Bjorn Riley. Here's second place. Bjorn Riley, second place, first round of the season. That's a great start for you. Yeah, I mean. Um, I went into the season kind of just wanted to really show everyone what I'm made of. So it was nice to come away with a second, especially after short track yesterday. I was feeling pretty good. So once we were like two, two laps away from the end, I was like, now it's time to dig deep and really like show them what I'm made of. And did most of it, but Riley's just flying. He, uh, Luke had a quick fumble, and then that's how Riley got the gap, and he just held it so strong. Um, I fought hard, but, you know, we're both going for the Olympic spot too. So it's like everyone's giving the beans here. So, yeah. We could see the fight. You started to bring that gap back within six seconds of Riley. What did it feel like to have that carrot so close to you? Oh, dude, it felt great. I mean, like, it felt so good but so horrible at the same time because you're just digging so deep and you know you're catching, but then you're just trying to see if you actually are able to keep holding it. And for me, that wasn't the case. I couldn't keep holding it. I started fading by the end from the heat and all that. But um, also, I'm, I'm just so stoked with second. I mean, USA coming with one and two. It's like Riley and I have been racing each other since, I think, like maybe 13 or 12 in every single race we've been battling each other. So being one and two at the World Cup now, that was like our dream from day one. So it's like I'm awestruck that we're now like up here doing interviews with you guys and all that. So great, mate. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Peace. There we go, Bjorn Riley. Got a funny feeling we're going to be seeing a lot more of him this season. Yeah, cool, cool interview of him. I like yeah, that. Yeah, nice guy. Yeah, really good to see that. What a performance! That's how we. Mo and that's how you motivate your, your each other. Yeah, we will see much more of these. There we go. Brazilian flag crossing the line for Otavio Quiroz de Souza. Third place, Finn Troidler. That was a hard-fought battle out there today. Tell us about your race. Yeah, I had a super good start, but then I already, yeah, I think I broke my rim in the first uh, start lap, and then I kept on going one lap, but then I had to change because I lost uh, pressure. I had to change, and I, yeah, fought my way back to the front group, 
but it was just a super hard day. First, set, first race of the season, third place, congratulations. Yeah, I'm so proud. Uh, thanks for everyone who keep believing in me, and yeah, thank you so much. Well, Bar, I didn't clock that no, uh, we wheel haven't. change, but what a result then yeah, for yeah, Trudeau. Yeah, yeah. We, we didn't see that. We know from uh, Alex Malakani, he had a front flat, but uh, Finn Trudeau seems to be, uh, must be almost a front wheel. I, yeah, I mean, must be, must be. How, how quick he went back uh, to the leading group. But we do, yeah, there are those fast rock sections here where you do rattle through on the front wheel quite hard, so yeah. definitely possible. Definitely it is. <laughs> yeah, really impressive from Trudeau that... Uh, that he'd managed to stay at the front of the race despite that. Checking the lap times, but it was still uh, Bjorn Riley. Who are we taking for dinner this week, Bart? Bjorn Riley still, yeah. Yeah, Bjorn Riley had the yeah. fastest okay. lap time yeah, today. Good. So one point for him, for the leader's jersey. Yeah, for the leader's jersey <laughs> and the fastest lap. Champions dinner at the end of the season with Bart and I. There he is, and Finn Trudler for Cube. Cube having a good weekend so far here in Mayapura. Well, the 23 women's short track victory. Akira Bowman now third place in the under 23 men's cross country Olympic. Bjorn Riley, a character Bart and I think we might well be seeing a lot more of this season. Um, we're definitely. excited about it, yeah. Definitely. Maybe next week already. Yeah, maybe next week. And we don't have long to wait before Arasha. More technical course from what we're hearing in Arasha as well. So it may well suit this man down the ground. Riley Amos collects cross country Olympic win number three here in Mayrapura. Did the double this weekend, won the short track, and has now taken the cross country Olympic win as well. There you are, your top three today. Amos, Riley, and Trudler. Quick with the champagne as well. Riley yeah, we've Amos. seen that. We've seen that today. <laughs> a bit. Winners, uh, winners are the quickest of the champagne. Bjorn Riley, third place in that particular competition, but he'll take second in the race. Can't see a thing, <laughs> Riley Amos <laughs> says. We're going to have to get used to it, Riley, if you're going to do so much winning. As Riley Amos then awaits his overall points leader's jersey, newly acquired after that result. So here is what tomorrow looks like at the WHOOP UCI Mountain Bike World Series. Three o'clock, cross-country Olympic women under 23. Join Bart and myself for that one. Then quarter past five, cross-country Olympic elite women before half seven. And the elite men, cross-country Olympic first round of the year. And if the races are anything as good as what we've seen today, Bar, I cannot yeah. wait for those. Uh, Same for me, yeah. Yeah, they should Incredible be good. Incredible goods. But... This man has some celebrating to do. Riley Amos, rightly so, well deserved. The perfect start to the season for the American. Amos celebrates in Mayapura. Well, starts the weekends don't get much better than Riley Amos.
taking a short track and then victory in the cross country Olympic as well. Full day's racing schedule for tomorrow here in Brazil. Don't miss a single minute of it. We can't wait. We'll see you there. Thanks for watching.